Welcome to Come and See, your podcast for finding truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. With host and founder, Richard Case, and co-host and retreat leader, Kathy Riccone. Join us every weekday at this time to discuss news, spend time in the Word, and receive answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. And now your host, Richard Case. Well, good morning, uh, Kathy. Um, good morning. Here we are. Uh, interesting enough, um, we had already said we were uh, concluding our series on the abiding primer on the 4th of September. And uh, somehow uh, we, we got our dates slightly off by a day. So we actually, uh, yesterday would have ended, uh, when we call it the 4th, but it was going to be aired on the 3rd, which is being aired on the 3rd, um, our, you know, kind of summary of, of, a, of the primer. And we, we, and this, it's really, for you and I, it's always exciting how God works. And, mm-hmm. and he does these interesting things that we don't understand, particularly when we first think, uh-oh, we kind of made an error here and you know, what, what do we do with this? And, mm-hmm. uh, and he says, well, actually you didn't make an error. Um, I needed this space to, mm-hmm. uh, to answer a question that you've been talking about as an example, which is forgiveness and reconciliation. Awesome. Uh, and we've been, we've been, <laughs> we've been abiding. Um, and I was, I was wondering, you know, what do we do? And then you, you got a question. Um, yes. And uh, go a ahead. Perfectly timed question, right? Yeah, a couple, <laughs> couple of questions. And by the way, it, it's related to, well, what do we do with that? And then um, uh, how do we pursue an answer to that uh, as we uh, process? So go ahead. Go ahead and read that. Yeah. So it said um, a recent question I have on forgiveness is what happens to Christians who don't forgive? Can and will God not forgive them on their transgressions if they're unwilling to forgive others? And do they go to hell? And then the a follow on. <laughs> do you want the follow on? Yeah. Yet or you want to go? Okay. Just so that simple. Just that simple. But are we going to go to hell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and then the next, the follow on was, I think, um, what, uh, what if what was done to us seems almost impossible to forgive? I know it's, it is not our job to judge or to seek retribution on our transgressors and through him, all things are possible, but where is the line between healing enough to forgive the act itself that was done and still feeling hurt by it? Yep. So a lot of tough stuff, you know, this, there, it, it spun into a whole conversation. Super cool to see what God is doing, you know? Yep. And the, uh, the question actually arises out of uh, scripture so that, um, uh, when we're asked questions or you have a question, um, it's always uh, what God says was, well, come and spend time with me mm-hmm. uh, and let's go to the word. Uh, and this is why, by the way, we teach cross-referencing or you can, um, uh, you know, understand things like forgiveness, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could put in, put in the word, uh, forgive, um, and then let's go to verses you know, right. that, that talk about this, uh, particularly if it's been stimulated by a verse maybe you, you've read and wondered about. Well, the question actually is is actually generated from the word itself. It's really interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go to Mark 11, 20 to 25, 26, and it actually it actually speaks to this uh, as a as a raising up a point, which we would have to say, huh. What the heck does that mean? You know, and so go ahead, go right. ahead and read that. It says, now in the morning they passed by. They saw the fig tree dried up from its roots. And Peter, remembering, said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. So Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. For assuredly, I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Yeah. So, so, 
Well, that seems, uh, whoa. Um, so right. in other Which words, is exactly, I think this, this friend, um, I don't know if she was reading in this passage or heard a teaching, but she hit that and she's like, wait a second, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this brings up questions. And this is exactly what you're saying. That question is an invitation to, to dive in deeper and abide. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's, um, it raises a question because it says so. Well, if you don't mm -hmm. forgive, then the father doesn't forgive you. And then the question becomes, well, does that mean if I don't ultimately forgive everybody, Am, mm -hmm. I, am I in a position where God hasn't forgiven me, and that means I die separated from God right? and wind up in, in essence, lose my salvation, or I, I wind up because I haven't forgiven, and that's, that's actually the critical piece. Um, well, that's what it says. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we, when we see that um, and we say, wait a minute, I thought we had eternal security. Mm -hmm. um, and we get to go to heaven regardless of, of what we're ultimately doing on earth at the moment. And um, uh, God says, well, come and spend time with me, and let's explore this. And this is, by the way, the beauty of what's called the entire counsel of God. Yes. Um, all of the word of God holds together, and that means we have to understand it all in light of, of what we learn as, as truth, and then it provides these interesting, well, then wait a minute, if that's true, then how does this verse relate mm -hmm. uh, to what you said? Because it does say right. that, you know, okay. So uh, it's a legitimate question. Um, it's uh, the two questions are, um, you know, if we don't forgive, are we potentially uh, uh, in a position where we don't spend eternity with God because uh, we're not forgiven? And then uh, secondly is, um, when it's so severe of what somebody has done to me, hurt me, mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I can't, I'm really having a hard time forgiving. Um, right. I know I'm supposed to, you know, but I don't, what do I do with that? Uh, right. Okay. So um, the question has been raised. So uh, uh, the good news is that this, the scriptures speak to this. So go to Hebrews 10, uh, read verses 1 to 18. And the whole discussion, by the way, in Hebrews uh, eight, nine, and ten is about, in essence, this point, mm. um, and it's um, you under and, and he's talking to you know people that understand the Jewish heritage. You do understand the sacrificial system, uh, and by the way, that he goes through a whole discussion of it's only temporary. It was only temporary, right. one year at a time, and by the way, you had to join that. Uh, with the high priest, and he goes into a discussion of this. The high priest would uh, go into the Holy of Holies, and um, he would offer a sacrifice for himself mm -hmm. to purify his transgressions for this following year. He would do the second sacrifice for his family, his personal right. inner circle, so to speak. And then he would do the third sacrifice for the nation mm -hmm. uh, that um, then gave uh, the release through atonement of, of the sack of the transgression for a year um, okay now once he did that having completed that now by the way it was never fully completed because he couldn't sit down and it was a year to year to year um, the people which is why they would go to Jerusalem to the temple and mm -hmm. they would they would participate in that by offering their own personal sacrifice mm -hmm. and saying I join what you did um, uh, and now I'm covered, you know, for, for that year. Um, and so then he describes, well, that was year after year, temporary, never permanent. Well, Christ made it permanent. So read, read Hebrews uh, 10, 1 to 18. Sure. It says, for the law, having a shadow of the good things to come and not the very image of the things can never with these same sacrifices, which they offer continually year by year, make those who approach perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? For the worshipers, once purified, would have had no more consciousness of sins. But in those sacrifices, there is a reminder of sins every year. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me and burnt offerings and sacrifices for sins you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. 
previously saying, sacrifice and offerings, burnt offerings and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first that he may establish the second. By that, we will have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest stands ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us for after he has said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds, I will write them. And then he adds their sins and lawless deeds. I will remember no more. Now, where there is remission of these, there's no longer an offering for sin. Yep. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, so uh, again, through this discussion of Christ being the high priest and the sacrifice, mm -hmm. um, he says, "I have perfected it once and for all, mm -hmm. uh, completed." Which is why, I remember, on the cross, uh, when he looked up to the Father, he said, "It is finished, mm -hmm. um, completed, done, once and for all." Uh, he said, uh, I perfected what the high priest would have to do year after year after year, which, and he even says it uh, in there, it's not permanent, and they're not permanently right. uh, saved. Uh, but Christ did it once and for all, um, uh, for all people. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the sacrifice of uh, now forgiving all of us, and think about it, there's no discussion in there of, uh, any condition that we have to meet for right. that for that act. Now I'm I'm talking about forgiveness, not reconciliation. Okay. Um, and he, there's no discussion here of reconciliation. He just says, um, "I have forgiven you on my own nature, uh, nothing that you did, but right. rather what I did, and I did it once and for all, permanently, uh, never to have to do it again." And I sat down at the right hand of the Father because it's now completed. And this never has to be done again. I've done it for past, present, and future. Okay, uh, once and for all. Okay, go to Colossians 2, uh, 11 to 15. Colossians 2, 11 to 15 says, In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Yeah. Uh, so he, uh, he says, okay, now remember... Uh, what I've done, um, and he accomplished four things at, at the cross. Uh, one, and, and he starts out, he uses the same verb, having done this. The first mm -hmm. one is, I've having uh, forgiven all of your trespasses. Uh, now remember, it's an act of God, and he has forgiven all of our trespasses. Mm -hmm. Every, everybody's, everybody has been forgiven by the act of God, um, by his nature. Um, okay, secondly, he took away the requirement that was necessary, which was perfection. Mm -hmm. In order to have relationship with me, I had, you had to be perfect. I removed that requirement. He says, actually, now you just have to believe what I did. Um, and then mm -hmm. he says, I've disarmed principalities and powers, and I've triumphed over them, so they don't have any more hold uh, on you. Okay, now. Um, when for, and this is important as we get into how difficult it is for us to forgive. Um, he said forgiveness is, is, is for everybody, once and for all, done deal, completed. Um, and what it did is it took away any requirement mm -hmm. for somebody to perform something, to receive it 
but there's still a requirement. And the requirement, mm. the requirement for believing, uh, for reconciliation and having a relationship with God is I believe that what you did is true. I receive that, and now I accept you into my heart as my, as your, as my Lord and Savior, and now I'm reconciled. So, so keep remembering this. Did Christ forgive everybody at the cross? Yes. Is everybody reconciled at the cross? No. How come? How come? How come? <laughs> because you have to choose to step into the reconciliation. Yeah, because I can't alter the truth. Um, I've given you an opportunity to have relationship with me mm -hmm. by what I did for you. I took away this requirement. You don't have to be perfect anymore. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is believe it. And I can't mm -hmm. change that truth. So, you know, right. uh, there, you know, there's a lot of people right now, what's called universalism, in, in, even in the church, is all those all kinds of ways to God, and God loves everybody, and, and everybody's going to make it. No, that's not true. Uh, he says, I can't alter the truth, mm -hmm. even though I've forgiven you and I've given you the opportunity to go to truth. You have to decide if you're going to process that and come to that truth. And now we can be reconciled. OK, now go to right. this is a verse uh, that I, I didn't give you before, but go to John 5, 24. Sure. John 5, 24 says. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. Yeah. So uh, he says, if you believe this, and remember, I forgave you, which gave you the opportunity to believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, now, by the way, this is interesting. If he never had done that, there'd be nothing to believe. Right. Um, we'd still be required to be perfect because that was the requirement. Um he said, I had to take care of that problem. Uh, you can't get there. Nobody, mm -hmm. nobody could get there. So the only way for me to, to have a relationship with you is I had to take care of the problem, which I did through my sacrifice, and I forgave you, allowing you the opportunity to believe it. But mm -hmm. if, if you believe it, you cross over. So mm -hmm. the, the first statement is, no, you don't lose your salvation. Right. Uh, because it, you cross over from death to life, it's done deal, completed, and you never leave it. And, and then, by the way, uh, Paul describes uh, there, is, there is a situation here, uh, and this is in 1 Corinthians 3, where he says you can kind of waste your whole life mm -hmm. because you don't follow God. If you truly are a believer, you're still going to get there. Um, but how you live is important relative to the rewards that you, you wind up with um, so keep remembering, and there's, there's lots of other scripture as well, but um, this one specifically says you do not lose your salvation, regardless of mm -hmm. what, what you do. You've crossed over already. So, right. so the fact that I fail at forgiving is not a condition to lose my salvation. Why? Because I can't lose it. Um, mm. And it's not about performing. Uh, it has to be about something else. Um, you know, is, is what do I do? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so let me just highlight. So in that, because you see now these two scriptures that if you were to read them standing alone, you would look at them and say they were contrary to one another. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so this is where, again, the abiding, okay, we're looking at the whole council of, scri of scripture and looking at everything and letting scripture interpret scripture. And like you said, this then puts validity to that question. Yeah. You're coming back. Okay. So this says we don't, can't lose our salvation. So then what is this other passage really talking yeah, about? Exactly. Okay. So this is the way you kind of begin to dialogue and journal out these questions. So yeah. I'm just kind of exactly. laying it out. Yeah. And you talk to God and you talk to people around you to help you understand. Okay. Now go back to Mark, or excuse me, go back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mark 11, read verse 24, 25, 26. Sure. Therefore I say to you, Whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your trespasses. Yeah. Uh, he says, so uh, you're a believer uh, by definition because you are praying. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and you're saying... Um, um, I can speak to this mountain. Um, I believe that I will have this. I'm praying. He said, now, while you're, you're in that mode, 
you're a believer in that mode. Hey, mm-hmm. if, if I remind you that you have unforgiveness in your heart, right? I need you to stop mm-hmm. because because it's indicating something has happened, uh, and it's about not whether or not your eternal salvation is set. Mm-hmm. It's it's your experience of the freedom that comes from what I've done, which is forgive you so that you can have this relationship. Something has happened to the relationship. Okay. Now right. go to Galatians uh, one or excuse me, five, one to one to four. He tells us what happened. Galatians All right. uh, five, one to four. Hold with me for just a second. Yep. I don't have that one marked either. Okay, five, one to four. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law. You have fallen from grace. Yep. So, um... Uh, he says, uh, now he's talking to believers. Mm-hmm. Uh, he said, if you go back to uh, law mm-hmm. um, and you you attempt to do something on your own, uh, separate from God. Which is really going back to performance as well. Going back to performance. Right. Then, okay. then you're obligated mm-hmm. to keep the whole law. Why? Well, because you've severed. The relationship, and and what he means there is, remember, because Paul is the one that that talks about eternal security. You have momentarily mm-hmm. separated yourself from the life of God, and you've fallen from grace. Grace means my ability to deliver the covenant, the beautiful pe- uh, life of of uh, abundance, mm-hmm. to you, and you've fallen because I can't give it to you. Why? Because you're not with me. Right. Uh, and, and therefore, you're not experiencing the privilege that I gave you through what? Forgiveness. Right. So it's funny. So- Even as you say that, I want you to pick that back up in a second, but I'll just put a little plug. The next series we started is called Walking in the Kingdom. Yeah. And that's exactly what you're talking about right now yeah. is this is one of the ways that sometimes we step out of the kingdom, right? Yeah. Um, so that um, uh, when you when you put all this together... Uh, it says, um, what does it mean he doesn't forgive me? It means I've walked away mm. from the freedom that allows me to have the life of God and the privilege of what God has already done. And I've walked away from that, and I've gone back to living in the world without, without mm-hmm. God. Um, and he says an indicator of that is forgiveness right toward others uh, so if you don't have forgiveness toward others he said you've you've separated from me because my life is not in you why because i forgave you on my nature i need you mm-hmm. to forgive others on my nature as well um mm. no, nothing to do with them it right. has to do with my my life within you because now think now this is really interesting why god already forgave him Right. He says, you got to join me in that spot toward that mm-hmm. person. You join me in that spot. If mm. you join me in that spot, you're walking with me in the kingdom. If you're not, you've separated from me. And he says, now you've, you've basically denied the freedom that I've given you to live out the life. It's not that you lose eternal security. It's that you, mm-hmm. lo- you lo- lose the vibrancy and the power of life today. Mm, uh, and so, so, and so come on, let's go. Um, all right. Then, um, he says, um, well, uh, yeah, but it's hard. <laughs> <laughs> it it's, is hard. Right? It's really <laughs> hard when somebody has hurt me so bad, um, mm-hmm. you know, through abuse or through, you know, just severe pain and injustice. Um, boy, I, I, how do I handle that? Because right. I'm struggling with the ability, you know, to forgive them. Um, and and if I forgive them, doesn't that release them to go ahead and either continue or they got away with it? 
Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, God, our sense of justice gets yeah, in the way with and, us, and right? And God says, well, uh, no. Um, uh, so um, uh, if you go to, uh, uh, I'm going to give you another verse here, but go to Romans 9. Um, and okay. go ahead and go ahead and just read, um, I believe it's uh, 14 through uh, 20, Romans, Romans 9, 14 to 20. Sure. Um, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness? Excuse me, excuse me, I, I, I'm in the wrong place. Romans 12, uh, 14 to 20. All right. Yep. Romans 12, 14 to 20. 21, um, actually, bless- 14 to 21. Okay, sure. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Yeah. Um, so uh, it says, now remember, as far as it's concerning you, you know, offer your peace. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we talked about this out of Luke uh, 10, is that um, we are to offer a peace. Would you, would you be willing to reconcile? Um, they have to say, yes, I do, and process the truth. And you, don't, you never mm-hmm. deny the truth. So if somebody's hurt you deeply, you don't say, well, I'll just ignore it. No. Right. He said, actually, it's healthy that you, you're upset about this, um, and it bothers you. Um, so you got to offer your peace. Okay, now, if I'm going to offer my peace, mm-hmm. kind of what must be important for me? I have to actually have I gotta peace. Be, I got to be at peace. Um, <laughs> yeah. So there's two steps here, um, is that one, and this is why he, he puts the whole thing together, he says, um, forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Mm-hmm. So the fact that they hurt you doesn't let them off the hook by you forgiving them mm-hmm. any more then God says, I let anybody off the hook when I forgave them at the cross. They're not in a position where they automatically have a, a eternal life with me. They can spend their life in hell if they never process that truth. And I can't, I can't change that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it doesn't let them off the hook. It only provides the opportunity for them to process the truth. And to see where that where that winds up, mm-hmm. um, and he said, so so if you can't forgive them, at the moment he says, I want you to set aside them, mm-hmm. and you and I got to spend time together, right? And you got to stay in, involved in these verses of forgiveness, and you have to receive the truth that I forgave you on my nature, and it has nothing to do with them, and it doesn't matter how severe. So so for example. Has God forgiven Hitler? Has he forgiven Saddam Hussein? Has he forgiven serial killer, murderer, liar, cheater, adulterer? Mm-hmm. Has he forgiven everybody? He has. See, he doesn't. He which doesn't, is hard for us to swallow, yeah, though, he if doesn't, we're honest. He doesn't yeah. rank that. Well, mm-hmm. that, that's, that's so, so, uh, you know, so awful that I can't forgive it. He said, no, I forgave everybody for everything, uh, even, right. the, even the worst, uh, which is why. If somebody comes who's a murderer in prison, let's say. Mm-hmm. And they say, you know what? I, un- I now understand the truth. I believe Christ. They're f- they receive reconciliation, and they'll spend mm-hmm. eternity with God. It has nothing to do with what they did. What does right. it have to do with? I for- uh, I've received forgiveness. I'm receiving the forgiveness. And yeah. now I process the truth. Um, and I know that I'll have eternal destiny. So um, he says now regarding to you, uh, he says, um, offer your peace. And the first question is, have you gone to forgiveness mm-hmm. on the basis that I forgave you? And and this person would say, no, I haven't right. yet. Okay, that's okay. Uh, what's the key? Abide with God. Mm-hmm. Uh, Father, I, I need to understand, receive, and have forgiveness for this person. That's not that easy. Uh, right. So I'm going to spend time with you abiding. 
until I receive your forgiveness that then extends to the other party, and now I have peace because it's your, it's your nature. And all you, all you can do is stay with it until you receive that. Uh, and it may mm-hmm. take days, weeks, it doesn't matter. Uh, then he says this, um, you've offered their peace and they've rejected it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they hurt you and they deserve uh, the, my justice. He says, I will take care of it. And, right. And matter of fact, he says, get out of the way. Because they're going to they're gonna experience my wrath because of what they did to you. Mm-hmm. Why? Because what they did to you, you did to me. And I can't do anything less. Um, mm. So trust that justice will be served. And he said, don't you repay evil for evil. You go on to your life of freedom, which goes back to Luke 10. Offer your peace. Yes, mm-hmm. they accept it. Get reconciled. No, they don't. What do you do? Dust your feet off. Right. And say, okay, I release this. And God says, I need you to uh, uh, forget the past, not spend any more time on this, because you know that, that justice will be served. Uh, you're experiencing my forgiveness, and you, you've released the burden of your bitterness toward what happened here. And you've gone as far as you can. Mm-hmm. And they're not gonna they're not gonna uh, process any further with you, and and so they stand having having injustice toward you, which is injustice toward God. Don't worry, I'm gonna take care of it. What I need you to do is to move on with your life, right? Um, and let it go. And I'll give you the power to release this, so it mm-hmm. no longer burdens you, and you don't think right. about it anymore. And so the two pieces are. Let's work on forgiveness first. And that's, mm-hmm. he said, that's just between you and me. Right. Now, now let me help you release the hurt of this. Um, and by the way, there's no limit to that. Mm-hmm. So there, there's not a hierarchy of, yeah, but this is so hard I can never l- release it. He said, no, that I could, you can release this. Um, you have to spend time with me. And I'll change your heart. Tra- it's called transformation, sanctification. Mm-hmm. I, will, I will transform you so you're never burdened by this any longer. Um, and the only way you can do it, it's not a formula, and you can't do it on your own. Okay, fine, I'll forgive him. Okay, fine, I'll forget mm-hmm. it. He said, no, that won't work. It actually makes it worse. It's right. It's like, I'm having a hard time forgiving him. Okay, he said, great, come and spend time with me um, until you get to that point of forgiveness. And, and by the way, I'm already there. If you join me, you'll be there too. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now i got to work on your heart to release this because they've, they've rejected it. By the way, I'm going to tell you something. They're cursed. Don't worry about that. I will repay. Mm-hmm. I will repay them. They're not let off the hook. And by the way, um, and this is important, and we talked about this before when we set up boundaries, if somebody keeps hurting you, i got to give you wisdom about how not to be hurt anymore. Right. Uh, so I'm not asking you to put up with it. Uh, I'm asking you to be freedom of it. But uh, there isn't anything too difficult for God. Uh, mm. Now, is it harder for us? Yeah. Uh, and all it requires is what? Spend time with me. Yeah. Um, and go to Paul's statement about, you know, release the things of the past and press on to the high calling of Christ Jesus and, and work with your inner circle and process and what happened and, and here's how I feel and um, help me to get freedom from this. And you can't get your own freedom. Right. It's only because what God will do and abiding and and this is really a great, great summary of, of the primer we did is um, abiding is just staying with it. Yeah. Um, and you recognize the issue. First of all, I'm having a hard time forgiving him. OK. Um, he said, well, the truth of that is between you and me. By the way, you don't lose your salvation. Uh, you've just separated from me. So the remedy is what will come on back. Mm-hmm. And you say, I repent of this. I'm willing to let you give me the forgiveness for this person. So, by the way, and this is cool. Um, can you be walking in the kingdom and and struggling with forgiveness? Sure. Yes. Just like anything else. Can I be angry? Mm-hmm. Sure. Can I be dealing with anxiety and fear? Sure. Um, it's not about being perfect to come back. Mm-hmm. It's saying, come on back. Right. Have a heart to receive it. Walk with me. Abide with me. I'll give you the power to forgive it. 
while you're walking with me. The only way it won't happen is you never come back. Right. Uh, and and that is really our choice, right? That's yeah. the choice. Do we stay with him and let him complete the work? I think of you know, the verse in Hebrews that says he is author and finisher of our faith. Yeah. So what he has begun, he will complete, but we need to stay with him in the process. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And it's not to be perfect. It's just to walk with him. And now, you're, okay, you're what you're you've you've restored the relationship uh, that was severed. Now it's back. Uh, you're back into grace. Um, and all you're doing is walking with me with a heart to let me transform you. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then the second point is, how are you doing with this? Eh, I'm, right. st I'm still burdened by this. I'm still bothered by this. It's hard to let go. Okay, well, let's go work on that. Um, mm -hmm. And I'll work with that. And what's fun is in that, he will, I mean, he knows it's a process. And the very thing, the unforgiveness, he'll actually use to bring other things out of your heart and show you other areas he wants to sanctify in the process of walking you into forgiveness and freedom. Yeah. And it can be a beautiful, beautiful freeing process, right? Yeah, yeah it really is. Um, so uh, this is a great uh, summary. You spent a little bit you know, longer than normal, but um, it's a great summary uh, with fantastic questions. And see, here's the beauty of this. The questions are fantastic. Mm -hmm. See, we have a tendency to think I, sh I shouldn't even go there because I know I'm supposed to forgive and I can't. And, and, and I, I guess I just, you know, try, 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 try. Um, but actually, God says, no, why don't you come and bring up the question? Mm -hmm. What the heck do I do with this? <laughs> because it's so hard for me. OK, great. Let's go. Um, OK, I've gone to forgiveness, but I just can't let this go. OK. What do I do with that? Well, come on, let's go. Let's go talk. Th See, there's the neat thing about the life yeah. of God. He says, bring it all. Uh, no problem. I, and it doesn't bother me one iota. The only thing that would bother me, God speaking, is that you never come. Um, right. And you either try to do it yourself or you, you struggle with uh, what I call stuffing it or acceptance and you live in misery and you accept it as God's will, which it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, so come on, you know, let's go. So, uh, Father, we're uh, we're just overwhelmed by, first of all, how you <laughs> orchestrate this great discussion, because I'm sure a lot of people have these questions. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, consider it a joy to be able to process it. Um, we know that these are hard things and they're not easy uh, and they're not to be just dismissed. Rather, is to be presented to you and process it based on the truth. And, and process it until it, we actually experience, which is what we've been saying about abiding. Stay with it until you really receive the truth of this in your real life at the moment. And don't mm -hmm. quit until you do. And so we pray that we will. Uh, we pray that this will be helpful. And again, if people have questions, you know, we'd love to keep helping them. And so thank you for the privilege that we have here in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Rich. Thanks for taking the time to answer this question for my sweet friends. And um, for anybody else out there who listened to this and this has brought up more questions for you, send them in to us at questions at abideministries.com. We'd love to talk about it and look forward to seeing you next time. Yep, we'll see you. And by the way, again, next uh, week, we start a new series on living in the kingdom, which kind of relate to this. So, um, Yeah, it ties back perfectly, it'll, right? It'll, it'll be a great, <laughs> great series to go. So we look forward to it. Thank you for joining us for today's episode of Come and See, your podcast for truth in a world of chaos. Brought to you by Living Waters Abide Ministries. Send us your questions and comments and tune in tomorrow for more answers to your personal questions about living life in God's truth. Remember, God's will is best and none better. His truth brings peace in this world of chaos.